We're going to be talking about multivariable functions today. And multivariable functions will be the topic of all of Calculus 3. In Calculus 1 and 2, typically we talked about x's and y's. And we know in function notation, we can write this as, for example, the function at x is equal to some rule that includes the variable x. So maybe it's x plus 4, or maybe it's 2x plus 3, but it's some kind of function. We know that the input variable, which is also known as the dependent variable, is inside the parentheses, and the name is to its left. In multivariable functions, we're no longer going to have one variable as input. Now we're going to have two variables as our inputs. So for example, x and t. So let's look at some examples in real life. In fact, we have more multivariable functions than we do just uh, single variable functions because typically things are dependent on more than one thing. So for example, the volume of a cylinder, we know mathematically that's pi r squared times h. So the volume is dependent on the radius and the height. So now I'm going to write, instead of just one variable for my input, I'm going to include two, radius and height. They're both my inputs. And my output would be the, the volume of the cylinder. A second example would be temperature. So my temperature might be dependent on my latitude, my longitude, and maybe time. So it's definitely dependent on uh, location. So for example, the temperature in uh, Puerto Rico is different than the, the temperature in Iceland, right? And so this is a three variable function. And then let's see, the salary of someone is often dependent on their education and their experience. So that would be a, an example of a two variable function. We can show multivariable functions in function notation like we just did, but we can show them other ways too that may be more visual and easier to quickly read. So for example, we might want to show a weather map to indicate the high temperatures on a summer day. Now, to do this, we're going to introduce what are called isotherms. And these are these contour lines across the continent. And if you notice, they divide the areas into regions. So this is, we're saying these are have a high of the 60s. And then this area has a high of the 70s. I like coloring these, kind of fun. Okay, and you get the idea. These are the 80s. And I missed a little bit here, right here too, this guy right here. And then let's maybe make this one be the 90s. And we'll find one more color. So this, ooh, this is hot. These are in the hundreds. So these are a quick way to visually find the, the temperature on, or the, the high predicted temperatures in a region. Now, we call these isotherms. So this region in here, these are have a high in the 60s. And then this isotherm right here, it's the borderline. So we know that, that borderline must be exactly 70 because it's bordering the high 60s and the, and the 70s. So we're talking about this border being exactly 70 if you were to land on it, right? So let's look at a couple of examples. So for example, Topeka, right here in the middle, it's halfway between these two isotherms. So this isotherm here separates 70 and 80, and this isotherm here separates 80 and 90. 
So we can say that halfway between there would be probably in the high in the like 85, a high of 85, somewhere in the middle. Let's look at another one. So for example, if you look at the buffalo, buffalo, you can see the isotherm separating these two regions is between 70 and 80. And it's very close to the isotherm. So I'm going to say that in this area, well, maybe I have a high of the high, uh, high 70s, maybe like a high of 78. Okay. So we can use isotherms and, and uh, maps to help describe the temperatures based on longitude and latitude. We'll be using this type of description, a visual description, often in this class, and we call these contour diagrams or contour maps, and we'll be doing more with them later in the semester. Now, I can also use a table to describe a multivariable function. So, for example, this table describes the quantity of beef bought in pounds per household per week. So, you can see that each row tells the household income per year per thousands. And each column tells the price of beef in pounds per, a dollars per pound, right? And then all these interior val values in here, so all of these, these are telling me the quantity of beef, uh, of beef bought. And we're gonna call this the consumption of beef function. And it's gonna be based on the price of beef and the income of the households. So this is my consumption. That's what my function's name is describing a function name. And then you can see the two variables are the price and the income. Now, what is the consumption when the price is $3.50 and the household income is $80,000? This is what this is describing. Where I find this on my table is first I look at my price of beef and I say, this column describes when, uh, when beef is $3.50 a pound. And next I look at the income, and the income tells me that $80,000. So I want to look at this row, because this row is telling me when um, the household income is $80,000. So the consumption of beef, the quantity bought, when it's $3.50 per pound, and for a household income of $80,000, is... 529 pounds per household per week. You can use these types of tables and maps to see what are the trends when the variables increase or decrease. So for example, if I hold the price of beef constant as household incomes increase, does the quantity of beef bought increase or decrease? So when I want to do this, if it says the price of beef is constant, that means I'm going to be looking at one column. So I can just pick a column and hold it constant. And now I want to look at the household income. As the household income increases, what happens to the quantity of beef? Well, you can see as my 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 household income increases as I go down the table. So I want to look to see what is happening to my quantity of beef as I go down the table. And you can see that the quantity of beef bought is increasing as the household in income per year increases. So yes, it increases. Let's consider if you hold the household hold income constant. So if we hold the household income constant, it just means you want to pick a row because this means that the household income is not changing. And then you want to look and see the price of beef, if we go to the right, it's increasing. It's going from $3 to $4.50. So let's watch what's happening to the consumption of beef. As the price of beef increases, the consumption of beef decreases.
variables can really tell us a lot about a trend. If we hold one of the variables constant, we can identify what's going on.